Okay, uh, so let's get started on today. A couple of announcements. Portrait Studio sale has ended. I'm so sorry for anyone who missed it, uh, for those who had to buy it full price. Um, there will be another sale um, come Christmas. Uh, so the 24th to the 28th, there will be a sale. Um, it'll be very similar to this one. And if you guys want to wait so you can get 20% off, you can. Uh, but uh, instead of that, I might just have a promo code up. But um, like from now till the 31st, do you guys, would you guys want that instead of a week of a sale? Because I feel like if, no matter how much I get it out there, no one will get the message that you can get it cheaper if you wait a month or if you wait a couple weeks. Um, you know, you can just wait a little bit and get a bunch off uh, just so that you don't have to pay full price. I'd hate for everyone to pay full price if they don't have to. Uh, but, uh, but yeah, if you guys want to pay full price and support us, that's okay too. Um, but uh, there will be a sale the 24th to the 28th and please go to the community tab and uh, join the Google Plus community. I'm not sure what will happen to Google Plus, when it will happen, uh, but the end of the year is coming very close. They might just throw it off uh, into the trash on January 1st. I don't know when they're gonna do it, but they might do it. But for now, let us keep, as it says in Abrahamic religions, if the day of judgment comes and you're planting a seed, go ahead and plant that seed, even if it's in the middle of a day of judgment, God will still let that seed grow. So just keep posting your stuff and we'll see what happens. Maybe the community will not will not go down. Maybe something will happen. If it's set in stone and they actually get rid of it, uh, we will find another way to post our stuff. Most likely on Facebook is the closest thing um, that we can do right now. Uh, so go to the community tab and look at the pinned message. These are the current running holiday challenges. They're beautiful. Please join them. You guys have one, two, three, one two weeks to finish them two weeks to finish an illustration it's not as much time as we usually get but i think i spoil you guys with how much time i give you anyways um there is the north pole elf character design and a nighttime holiday town environment design uh, choose one of the above categories for your holiday theme submission for december 18th or the 20th depending on which day i do them i'm expecting guests on the 20th and i'm kind of starting the whole christmas bonanza on the 20th so i am getting off uh, for about 10 days after the 20th and then we have um, the elf design is very similar to our last year's concept. The elf design is a fully rendered, colored, standing character design in a vertical canvas. No background, please. The elf should be designed around their chosen task, including an active standing gesture, no T-pose. Uh, an example for, of some of the tasks or roles for your elf design are Beastmaster Elf, Groundskeeper, Gardener, Potion Master, Guard, Soldier Elf, Chef Elf, Carpenter Elf, etc. It's just something fun for you guys to fill up your portfolios with. And remember, it doesn't have to be the know me, like so someone asked me if um, it has to be the typical basic Christmas elf. No, they can be full grown elves, like majestic Lord of the Rings elves. They're just northern and, and, and kind of holiday themed. Um, there is a twist to this challenge, uh, but before I get to that, for the environment challenge. So you have either an elf design, character design with no background, or a full illustration environment design. Try to represent the spirit of the season in an environment. Um, the spirit of celebrating warmth in the cold and dark of the clashing and the clashing of the two color worlds, the twinkling candles, indoor warm lighting out against the outdoor blue, drifting snow or windy snowstorm, clusters of elf people uh, gathered around a tree or a warm market full of buying and selling, just a hustly bustly, um, a town or a really quiet evening, like Christmas Eve kind of town. The twist of these challenges is to not use any obvious Christmas symbols of any kind. No Abrahamic stuff. So imagine the holiday town as closer to a Yule pagan representation than any Christian or Abrahamic symbolism. This is set to challenge you so that you're not using basic um, symbols to pull off the environment, but you're actually using lighting and natural forms and patterns uh, to develop the environment. Candles are acceptable, as well as Yule logs, wreaths, or any other winter plant or natural items. Not acceptable, the Western image of Santa Claus, any religious symbols, angels, nativity scene, etc. None of that, all of that is off limits. Please don't add any religion to this. It's just very, very basic Christmas warmth against the cold. Uh, not Christmas, but like the warmth, uh, celebrating the, the season of warmth, of warming up and getting together and being indoors against the, the howling outside uh, horror. Um, so n these rules go for either challenge category, so no symbolism on the elves either. And if you have any questions, please ask below. So if you, guys, if you guys have any questions, I'll fix this to reflect the questions. And yeah, have, have fun. All right, so two weeks, you guys have to do this. And uh, that's it. Let's get to today's critique hour. That's it for the stream. Goodbye, guys. <laughs> I'm joking.
<laughs> I'm so fucked up today. Um, all right. So what am I looking at? I'm looking at some major depth problems. So this tree in the background has the same amount of value as the tree in the foreground, even though it's in the background. And there's a lot of sun in the way. So there's a lot of air between us and this tree and a lot of foliage and a lot of disturbed earth and a lot of particles and a lot of uh, uh, just atmosphere and thick air in this kind of like battle we have here. So what's happening is you have a great long hori uh, uh, horizontal canvas, which is kind of feeling a little bit like we can crop here and it would still work or we can crop here. It feels like this area in the center is completely empty, which we have to fill up. Um, and you've completely broken your rules of depth. I've looked at your uh, uh, piece, the, the grayscale version of this. And um, even then your values are a little bit off. Let's see. Okay. I'm not sure which tree belongs where because you really do not have any value separation between these rules here. And uh, this was actually the theme of today's critique hour with my patrons. What the heck did I just do? <laughs> um, I forgot where I started the lasso. Oh no. Oh no. Okay. Um, damn it. <laughs> I have no idea where I started this lasso. Oh, holy Hannah. Okay, okay, I can still do this. I can still do this. I completely like inverted this, but I can still do it. Okay, so please um, respect the mod's request to focus on the lesson if anybody starts talking. a little too excited with my lasso completely lost it and messed it up if you guys have questions on the um assignment for this month um like the challenges please let me know i am trying to juggle a lot uh this month so if I, I might not get to all the questions but um uh like in the in the post but if you guys have any questions right now floating in the air ask me now this is the best time to get to me <clears throat> okay, and then we've got select inverse, I think. Um, no, no, no. Select inverse is the back. Oh, man. This is so tricky. This is so damn tricky. All right, I guess I have to go in there and get every single one of these. It wasn't so bad. Okay, dedication. All right, so I'm just gonna save this lasso before I lose it and have a heart attack. And um, I am going to select inverse the background. And what I'm gonna do is just start throwing things into the distance and the way you do that is by raising the value of objects in the distance. So we are using this same color you used here for any objects in the distance there. And I'm using that for all the far away trees. All the far away dudes as well. See how little detail you have here? You have absolutely no detail here. Right. So. There seems to be this crazy battle right now between the baboons and the uh, people. I need to cool down this green, so I'm going to get rid of the yellow in it. I'm going to move away from yellow towards blue. That's a cooled down green. And I'm going to get the color layer, and that's what I throw on top of any cool greens in the shadow. 
then all this sunlight should really just take over. No, 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 not like that. It should really just be pushed forward a little bit as well as desaturated. You have a very stylized representation of the sun right now that's not allowing your characters to come through. And then you have almost no edge work between the character and the background. So let me hide this. And then the character itself, these characters, I'm just referring to them as one unit, they need to be darker because they seem to be in their own little environment. And I'm going to use this purple color again to first cool them down. And then I'm going to darken them. by just dropping their value. Okay, so what will start happening is suddenly this character will pop out into the immediate foreground and become separate from what's happening back there. Where before you were you were merging a lot of these values together. Let me drop this down. Okay, what ha what's happening essentially um, is that you also have this middle ground that's just not working. So what you can do, because the far end of the canvas is not that important, unless it's panning, unless it's for like an audiobook that also has some pictures to go along with it, you really don't need that end that much displaced. You can actually crop the entire scene right about here and then fill the rest in. You really don't need to have that much of a stress stretch in the canvas unless you're using it for some kind of commercial purpose or something like that. Unless you're panning or you're going to be you're expecting to pan the painting. So select inverse. And once we once we kind of figure out what you've done here, we can see you don't have any other detail in this area. You just don't have anything going on. So what you can do is throw in some simple trees to fill this area up. Maybe not coming out of the head. And what that will do is just fill up this area so that it's not randomly empty. I'm just throwing in some shrubbery or foliage. So we're filling that area up and then I'm also just throwing these off into the distance. You need to show a little bit more of how the ground is also present back here. So see this value? I'm going to just carry it over into just so that we can see that there is a ground that's still present there. And I'm going to keep going back and darkening this character in the foreground. So select inverse, burn on midtones. Don't burn on shadows because that's just going to look really super cheesy. And then I'm going to burn on highlights as well. And this is just all about separating background from foreground. You really don't have enough separation there. All right, and then you have this empty space. It's something like a tree is happening here, but not really. So on the inversion of that, you can bring in that environment color so that we can see some kind of tree happening there. So you complete that part of the canvas a little bit better. Okay, and then you've got, so again, I'm using my lasso, go 
going down, selecting inverse, and you've got this almost floating effect here. Everything seems to glow. I would darken the tail a little bit more. Since it seems like this whole section of the forest is in some kind of shadow or is, in, is kind of hidden beneath. And you can see now we're creating this nice separation. Also, you have a tone change. So you've got some uh, warm shifting into the cool further away from the sun. So that's what something you need to work with. That's something you need to keep. So I'm just shifting these values lower away from saturation, so they're just a little bit less orange. And then you've got this glow, select inverse. Trying to keep that kind of classic Rosetta look in there. So I'm trying not to interrupt your the values you chose. But I'm not sure if a Godray would do much for the painting. It definitely would, but it's not like this Disney establishing shot at all but I might just throw in a little bit. All in all, all that yellow you had coming in was just a little bit too, too beautiful, but let's just keep it like this just for now. You also have these guys here. You, got, you have all this happening. So either you add another set of trees to fill this gap or you bring them closer because the closer they get, the more tension you create. The, the closer the enemies get to each other, the more dangerous and explosive the feeling and suspense will be added to the painting. But right now what you're doing is you're keeping them safely away from each other. Nobody's going to really touch anyone. They're all just like sizing each other up. It's kind of like a bro down. And that's about it. You guys know what a bro down is? <laughs> if you do, you're my new favorite student. Okay, so something like that, just somewhere in the middle to break this up. Something to add to this so that, you know, it really does feel like a clustered environment. And I'm just going to just duplicate this asset and then just move over here and just add more of that oversized kind of foreground value here just to show where everyone's, where everyone's just fighting. As you can see, this tree, this tree is just fine here. This tree is where this tree is supposed to be, but look who was there, a character. You have no business adding characters that close to the edge of the canvas. Why are they that close? I'm gonna blur this tree, filter, blur, Gaussian blur, because it's more forward in the, in the image. And I'm just gonna go back and shift these guys over here A little bit more this way where they belong closer in to each other okay so you have this fighting scene that we need to bring apart you have this stuff in the foreground I, I it, as, a, as an environment it's beautiful as a story it makes no sense with the way you posed it before the way you staged it why, why is there so much empty space here? Why is there so much serenity? Why did you use so much yellow? Yellow is a healing color and greens are healing. So you, you, so clearly these are the good guys that you've surrounded with green and gold. And these are the bad guys that you've surrounded with purple and red. Um, but you have a lot of green and gold right here, right in the middle. So <clears throat> it, you need to bring them together and create more tension. You need to depend less on your symbols with your colors to kind of finish the scene. And you need to have something cut, ar cut around the middle so it feels like a clustered forest environment. I, f I like what's happening with the trees right now. And I could possibly do with another little baboon character somewhere here in the foreground. Kind of like ready to fight. Maybe a little bit better drawn. I'm not sure how baboons old things but I guess they're very haunched 
So you have more baboons kind of fighting away and um, some baboons coming in from the top. Uh, with their little snouts. Maybe a baboon's like that. And this one is kind of like ready to attack. Oops, I have to make him rotate it, so. Okay, and maybe he's like crouching forward, moving forward. Okay, so they're all like climbing, jumping up from the tops. They've got their tails, they're ready to attack, and these guys are retreating. So now it's more about the baboons fighting in the foreground. It's just a single shot from a movie that you've, that you've created. And less like you just got one half and then that's it. Because it just feels so empty without these added assets here. Okay, so we've pushed these guys. I'm not sure what they were doing at the far end of the canvas. This just made this really awkward empty space. We're just floating in, waiting for something to happen. So we've pushed these guys this way, included some foreground, added tension, increased the, uh, the, the cluster and the forest feeling in the foreground. We can even blur the characters in the foreground. It doesn't matter how much detail you invested here. Depth is depth. There's rules that you have to follow. And if you want to, you can make some people kind of like... Um, struggling to climb. They look like they're retreating. They don't look like they're winning. And then just adding more pieces here of foreground uh, baboons and keeping this one makes it feel like he's the leader of the pack. He's the one leading the offense against the invading characters. And if you feel like that far half of the canvas is too dark, feel free to go in there and just raise some of these values up. All right, so this is not gonna work. I'm not sure what I selected. Oh, whoopsie. Right. Um, 10. Okay, so we're just raising that contrast that we're seeing all the characters peek through. Oops. Just that is enough. And you can add whatever characters you need here if you want to add more. They, they're very under-rendered, they're very symbolic, but we are reading the feeling of retreat from them. You can also add in some more silhouettes of people in the foreground. So, it's just kind of like these invaders and animal life and human life are kind of just like clashing into each other. I'm just using placeholders here. Okay, it feels a little bit more clustered. As for this drop, you need to do something with it. Something needs to happen here. It's a little bit too close up. Or if you feel like being lazy, you don't feel like you know doing anything with it, you can always add some root system, some more plant life, anything really to just add to the scene. Okay. More plant life on these parts here as well might also help fill the scene up and make it feel busy and clustered and again high tension. Remember there is a good way to use cluster in a painting. It's just to create the feeling of claustrophobia. You actually feel like you're, um, you know, constricted. There's not enough space to pull everything off. So. I'm raising the background value just a touch, just so that, oops, that's connected to the background. <clears throat> Select inverse, turn off, hide. Just raising it just a touch so things are a little bit more disconnected. Okay, that kind of gives us more of an establishing scene. Um, where you had it before felt a little bit one that just felt like polar opposites of each other in this scene. Um, things feel a little bit uh, not dangerous, kind of awkward. It's like it was a completely different story on this half. These guys don't even know the baboon is there. They're just threatening, they're threatened by some other force. It doesn't feel like a baboon and its baby is doing much. The baboon looks like it's wearing a shirt, by the way, with the way you wrap the baby baboon's tail around it. 
He looks like he's the civilized one who put a shirt on that finally learned how to speak English and is finally kind of like attacking the humans. Rise of the Planet of the Apes type situation. Okay, let's move on. Any questions at all? Nope. Okay. Um, so for this piece, I saw it posted a couple of times. Um, and it's supposed to be a scene where the character is visited, like it's a scene from a book, and the character is visited suddenly in this magical moment by this angel and I'm not sure what the angel is doing but oh my god this framing is just destroying your piece you need to leave it open leave that frame open do not frame it does not help the painting look any better I'm just gonna get rid of that I'm sorry okay so first of all Nighttime doesn't have to be absolute pitch black. You can have half the canvas a little bit brighter. Second, this, this is an angel that just popped in from the sky. Okay, so what we want is to show a little bit, just use a little bit of light show, use a little bit of light magic to kind of show where this angel's kind of doing to this character here. It's obviously surprising him. His gesture's great. Wings are a little asymmetrical. So what you need to do is use the only light you have to bring this character out and illuminate them. So what I'm going to start off with is just separating the wings a little bit. I'm going to start off with what is my light source question. So what is my light, light source? This is it. And I'm just going to go crazy. All right. Why? Because this is going to be the only establishing factor for depth in this entire scene. Maybe the fire kind of went nuts. Maybe the energy surge of having an angel enter our realm made the fire go crazy. I don't know what it could be, but you have to use some kind of element here to... dramatize the situation right now it just seems like an honest to god play in the middle of nowhere i mean if you threw some strings up here for the guy it would it would make a lot more sense than what you have going on so now that i set that up i have to set up some cast shadows so before after that means we are darkening objects here look how much darker look how black his leg is that is too black. Yep. Instant action in scene just add a <laughs> Okay, so we have this kind of like a silhouette type scene set up. Okay, we've got a lot of rim light on his face, so that would explain where all the light is coming from. Okay, the character's starting to come out now. We've set up the spots where the light can't reach. It's only going to be half of this leg, not all the legs, because this leg cylinder is rotated towards us. Okay. You also have one more really important thing to do, which is going to be a little crazy. You have to illuminate this entire character with gold. And the reason being is, one, he's angelic. Two, he seems like a friendly character. Three, he's completely surprised his friend. So those are all reasons to guide the viewer into seeing that this is a character that can also be interpreted as a light source. And that means no shadows, no universal shadows, no shadows are allowed on this character. And now you have all this beautiful extra space to expand on the detail work you have in the wings. Because apart from the wings, you don't really have anything interesting going on that we could say we've we've seen before, that we can say we've never seen before, or something that will kind of wake up the scene. So you, now you have a combined element between the fire and the, and the angel, which you can completely just 
expand on by actually expanding the light source. Okay, so look at that. Look at the distance now between the character and what's happening to the angel, which you rendered like he was an everyday normal fella. That's not possible. He's an angel. <laughs> How much louder do I have to say it? Now you have this wonderful separation now between the character, who is a normal guy, and this angelic character. Okay, I think that's what you were struggling with. You really were not respecting the, your own kind of like decision to make this a larger than life situation. You don't even have to, like this character who just saw him, did he really see him in all his detail in his shirt, shirt dress or whatever? Not shirt dress, what's it called? Uh, his waistcoat and everything? Did he really just wear, did he just see an angel with a waistcoat? Did he see the waistcoat right away? So why'd you render the waistcoat right away? Right? So, um, image, image size, let me just, um, let me just bring it back down to 3000. My computer can handle that better. Okay. So you can keep it this dark if you want to, but now that you've made him face the light, this is what he looks like as well a little bit, but you have this angel here and now you have an opportunity to one, mess around with some light effects on the white shirt. The white shirt can really be white. So he'll have his detail. He won't be immediately recognizable. I wouldn't focus on the, the waistcoat. I'd probably focus on the on the wings. This, this person with wings just came down. Even if he's not angelic, even if he's not magical, when I first see someone with wings floating down to me, I'm going to notice them as a supernatural force first interpret them as a super force first and then I will humanize them as the story develops. Every single story does that. Every single anime does that. Every single um, anything does that. So remember in How to Train Your Dragon, how did we see Toothless first? We saw Toothless first as this force of, of just danger, this just glowing dark thing in the sky and it just shot out this blue and it was just scary. And as, they dis as it started to become more recognizable, it started showing more human features. It got disgusted, it was trying to feed him, it was sharing food, it was proud, it was sad. So you can humanize later, but you humanized way too much early on. It really did not help the painting. It didn't help the divine feeling of what was happening. It didn't create this sense of wonder. It doesn't, doesn't feel like a, a character who would surprise me. It just feels like a guy with ropes attached to him and it kind of feels like they're testing out a scene for a movie. So we've expanded the edges of the canvas and now we're expanding the, um, the space to fill the light up with. Okay, we need a little bit more light this way. This way. So my lasso job is pretty bad. You have the time to kind of go back and really adjust some of this stuff. I love what you did with the gesture, so it's just a shame that he was responding so strongly to someone with, you know, pretty basic contrast level. And also, now you've you made something lighter in the distance, you have a chance to, um, to add kind of more of a mysticism to this character. because this depth that you've created makes them feel a little bit far and disconnected and that mysticism is connected to the mystery of that. He's not immediately available for detail. Sorry, I said shirt dress. <laughs> Okay, um, I wouldn't let the uh, wings be completely yellow, or him, okay, and then I would add saturation to the fire or anything nearby it, just to throw a little bit more of that explosive light. 
Um, the fire value of the of the rocks in front of the fire seem okay, but I would maybe make them a little bit more dark the closer they get to the fire, just because the silhouette is getting stronger the closer we get to it. You can throw in some embers. This I really wouldn't spend so much time on the stars. We don't see the stars with this much explosive fire. Have you ever been in a bonfire? And you just can't see the stars at a point. You have to go all the way away from the bonfire for the light to stop polluting your ability to see the stars. It really has to be a dark day for you to see them. Or you have to be in the dark to see them. Any, any light in your eyes is not going to let you see them. Alright, so then we have the character here feeling a little bit washed out. That's when you start bringing in your detail. Okay? really dark scene really hard to tell what's going on it's still fire and it's still nighttime so check check you still have everything where it belongs okay so does anyone have any questions it's pretty much all of it for today um really not a critique hour more like a critique oh is it 50 minutes been really no critique hour or critique half hour including announcements <laughs> <clears throat> Any questions? I'm going to be of assistance. What key to, do you press to invert lasso? I right click um, to invert lasso. But you can uh, invert with shift control I. Um, okay. Can the Holiday Village painting be horizontal or vertical? Um, if it's like a forest scene and it's like trees, like houses pressed into the sides of trees, yeah, it can be a vertical canvas as long as you use some perspective. If you're using a vertical canvas without perspective, it's a very, very boring scene. Would the shadow of the guy in the front be a little bit more desaturated? Um, it's already such a dark scene, you don't have any saturation to, to desaturate. You have nothing to desaturate, so just take a look. Everything's already so washed out. There's like nothing to, de to, sat to desaturate other than the fire, and you can't do that. The fire needs to be this high. I, not J, I was spamming the keyword. Oh. <clears throat> yes, nighttime doesn't have to be absolute pitch black. Good note taking. Can we do a group of people for the elf challenge? No, just one just one elf, please. Just focus on focus on rendering one elf. You only have two weeks to do it. Cool down. Sorry, I meant more blue. Um yeah, you can make him more blue, absolutely. If you want to stylize that, you can grab you kind of have to raise his value up a little bit but because blue looks so good no matter where you put it. You can um, just blue everything that isn't being touched by the light. That's more of a stylistic choice, really. But yes, you can. I forgot about the arm. Also, it doesn't have to be so dark at the top of the canvas. You can make it a lot more blue just to fill the sky up with something. Okay, so I'm just, uh, and this, this is a good lesson for you guys for your holiday challenge so that you don't make it absolutely black. You can get away with a lot of stuff without making it completely black. Sorry about saturating the dude. But see how blue the sky is? You can keep it like that. It still looks like nighttime and it's still very, very beautiful. And I'm just going to erase away at the dude. Alright. Any more questions? When is the next critique hour? The next critique hour is going to be Thursday the 6th, this Thursday at 5 p.m. Eastern Time. So did you guys want to have a theme for the next critique hour? Is there something that you guys want to study? 
Um, you guys can do hands. We can talk about hands if you guys want another eye lesson. What's something that you guys want to see for your next class? So that I can assign the homework for it and you guys hand it in between now and Thursday. All right, is there a theme or do you guys just want to keep going with the illustrations and seeing what you can pull off? Does it make sense to add details in the background like bags in the background? Bags? What do you mean bags? I'm confused. On some pieces you drill it into us to chill out on the drama, but this was the opposite. Um, because it was, well, let me show you the before and after. Because it wasn't enough drama. Sometimes students just don't have enough of what they need. Just because one class I, I diagnose a certain study does not mean that that one class is going to be a reflection of everyone's requirements. Everyone has different issues and everyone has different issues in different degrees. So sometimes students just do, don't, don't bring in enough to a painting and they have to fix it. Sometimes students overdo it. Most of the time students overdo it. Very rarely do we find students who just keep it, keep it very dim like this. This is a dramatic scene. This of course I remember was um, very close to the character, the artist's heart. I think they were gifting it to someone. So, uh, one will a resource pack be, be provided? Two, can we use items like presents or decorations? No Christmas decorations in the typical Western stuff, like the bow or stuff. But if you want to have like a a couple of leaves wrapped around a um, a, a gift and you have some string um, wrapping that up just think natural items think natural because this is a texture study for you guys it's a it's an opportunity to try painting different stuff if you're gonna just be painting a simple Christmas box you and a million other artists are doing the same thing try to do something else with your and with your you know holiday themed art studies how much detail is required as much as you can I said fully rendered uh, the critique hour will follow and I will correct what issues you've overdone for the character design, do we stage them um, doing def doing their defining tasks? No, but you can pose them as a standing gesture to reflect the personality that they have to have in order to complete their task. So if it's a, a beast master, I'm sure they're going to be a little bit stronger, bigger, burlier. Um, if it's a potion master, a little bit of a thinner body. Think tropes and what would be the, um, like if someone has studied all their life chemistry, they would be always haunching forward on their desk like a nerd. Um, and then the beast, the beast master character would be more like big guy, uh, the jaw, kind of something like that. Um, I might not provide a resource pack, but I may, but I think it's pretty self-explanatory. Um, oh, can we talk about fabric and folds? Fabric and folds are always great. Um, would I have any interest in doing long-term commission work on a graphic novel? Um, I'm not open for commissions at the moment, but uh, I'm curious as to what it is that, that, that you're writing. I'm still curious. <laughs> maybe something useful for the challenges. Uh, okay, maybe something useful for the challenges. So what you guys, um, it might be a little bit too much considering you guys also have to do the studies, uh, but drapery sounds really good though. Thing is in the right bottom part, they seem to distract a bit from the main. Um, that's because the contrast is too high. You just have to bring them down. I would just blur them down a little bit and they wouldn't be so distracting. Can you redo your approaching a face video? Um, that's, a, that's a very popular one, isn't it? Maybe, maybe for the new year. Are holiday lights off the table then? Probably yes. The equivalent of them last year was like rocks that glowed. Or um, what you guys can do is uh, make some kind of candle or candelabra or something like that outdoor. Uh, maybe some jars with some candles in them. Maybe some fireflies. There's always a realistic equivalent. Instead of having typical really cheesy Christmas related themes, you can keep it holiday stuff but it's all natural, like another universe of people interpreted it in their own way without the Christian symbolism. 
Um, I'm new to your channel and new to art. Any advice or comments? To get started, I think you should think about form studies, follow, join the community, look at what, what other artists are trying. A lot of artists go in for the 14-day challenge and perfect their portraits, but in order to do that, you have to go have a good idea of your forms, basic cubes, pyramids, learn how to paint them in a floating space suspended in some light source, learn to respect your light source. It's an excellent place to start. Um, okay, so uh, can we use the red-green uh, color scheme without it being overly saturated and cheesy? Yeah, go ahead, but this is a nighttime scene. You're not going to have a lot of daylight to reveal these colors. You're thinking basically yellow and blue and a little bit of whatever else is allowed through if they're, if they're nearby some yellow. But everything gets desaturated into the blue wash of the nighttime scene and it will not be visible in its full saturation color. So yellow may be visible, but in blue it's gonna turn into white, green is gonna turn into blue-green, red is gonna turn into purple, and um, uh, yeah. Okay, uh, so that's it for questions. Thank you everyone for joining. I'm not sure what the person meant with the bags, but if you are talking about something in the background, mm, they wouldn't be visible. They just simply wouldn't be visible. I think forcing them in would look bad. If they do, they catch a little bit of yellow and that might look good, but that's about it. Okay, uh, I'll let you guys go. Good luck with everything, and I'll see you guys on Thursday. So it's official. Please make sure that you are doing fabric studies for Thursday so we can talk about fabric folds. Make sure it's grayscale in a floating form study environment with one light source. You can do multiple folds of fabric, um, but that will be, uh, if I find any, I will work on them for, for critique hour. Uh, but if I don't see any, I'm just going to go into the basic critique style that I do. I may do a 14-day challenge if nobody posts any fabric studies. Please post fabric studies. Um, bye, guys. Thank you, everyone, for watching today. Bye.